Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Travis Waddy with State Farm Insurance, um, and I'm, I'm joined today actually by uh, several State Farm agents from the Augusta area, and some of our uh, sales leaders who, uh, who represent the uh, state of Maine. So thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Senator Dutremble, who, uh, who has a fun announcement uh, with respect to something that's very important and near and dear to State Farm, and that is the crime of arson and detecting it. So, Senator Dutremble, if you'd like to uh, make your announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Senator David Dutremble. I represent District 32, which is Alfred Arundel, Benefit, Lyman, Dayton, and Kennebunk Port. And today we're here for a very important reason. I've been in the fire service for 27 years, a lieutenant with Benefit Fire, and today I take this honor of presenting this joint resolution declaring the week of May 3rd, 2015 as Maine Arson Awareness Week. I want to ask the Fire Marshal Joe Thomas to come up so I can present the award. Thank you, Senator, Lieutenant, my friend David. Um, this is a, a, a real honor for us with the Fire Marshal's Office. Um, as you know, this is Arson Awareness Week, and uh, for us to be able to feature our canines uh, is really a, a very exciting thing for us. Um, and our relationship with State Farm, I mean, we go back a long time uh, together as, as uh, uh, two uh, organizations that uh, work uh, uh, steadily toward trying to deal with fire loss, life loss, and obviously in the case of recognizing our canines, uh, for the bad people that set fires. Um, you know, the, the, the dogs that we have and uh, the crime of arson in the state of Maine is uh, a, a very uh, trying problem for us to work on. Last year, in 2014, we had 135 substantiated cases of, of arson uh, in the state. And I can tell you, we still have a number of uh, active cases from 2014 that may very well eventually become incendiary in nature as well. Um, but I will tell you this, one of the things that, that impresses me with our dogs is, uh, as human beings, uh, you know, we use our eyes, we use our ears, we use our senses, and uh, in fire investigation, uh, we look, we see, we hear, uh, we touch, uh, but boy, when it comes down to the detection of the crime, uh, these two uh, canines that are with us, you can't beat their smell. Um, and their, uh, their, their record is impeccable. Um, and again, you know, I, I just want to thank State Farm. Uh, State Farm has supported us. We've been uh, working with State Farm in the canine program here in the state of Maine since 1993, Mike. Um, a long time. You know, we've had a number of dogs that have been uh, provided to us by State Farm. We also work in our canine program with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Uh, in fact, uh, Scott Richardson's canine Huff is an ATF dog. Uh, Danny's uh, Shaster is is the State Farm dog, and believe it or not, they get along just impeccably well. So. Um, and it is because of a joint venture with uh, interested parties such as State Farm and our agency that uh, we can make a difference in, in crime of arson. Uh, arson is a very deadly crime. In 2014, seven of our fire fatalities were associated with uh, arson-related fires. Um, and, uh, you know, over two and a half million dollars in property lost to, to that crime. Uh, so when you look at all of the various crimes uh, against humanity out there, arson stacks right up there, and it's because of our cooperative program, and especially with our canines, that we are able to make a difference. And uh, we really appreciate the uh, sentiment from the legislature, and uh, I personally am very thankful for the recognition of our teams and what they do for the agency and they do for the state of Maine and, and the people thereof. So I want to thank everybody for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Fire Marshal Thomas. Uh, I'd like to invite Bob DiCarlo. Uh, he's a sales leader for the, uh, in here in Maine for State Farm. <coughs> Say a few words about the State Farm uh, Arson Doc Program. Thanks, Travis. Fire Marshal, thank, thank you. you. It's a privilege for us to be with you all today. 
The arson dog program has a direct impact on deterring arson crimes. Public education on arson, arson investigation, and fire prevention through community outreach is essential to providing safer communities. State Farm sponsorship of the Arson Dog Program parallels the values and characteristics that we aspire and strive to be as a corporate citizen. And it's a perfect complement to State Farm's good neighbor values. We're proud of the fact and happy to share with you today that over 350 teams have been placed since 1993, as Mr. Thomas said, um, when the program began in conjunction with uh, the Maine Criminal Justice Academy. A phenomenal record and we're very proud of the partnership. So on behalf of State Farm, I want to thank Senator Dutrumbull and, uh, and Representative LaJoy, certainly Fire Marshal Thomas for his enthusiastic support of the program. Goes without saying, Dan, Shasta, Scott, and Huff, special thanks. But last but not least, all the great men and women throughout the state of Maine that dedicate themselves to fire prevention services. We're proud of the partnership. Thank you all today. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I think now for the moment you've probably all been waiting for uh, I'll invite Mike Casperin from Maine Specialty Dogs, who works very closely with uh, the State Farm uh, Arson Dog Program. He's going to share a bit about what what uh, Huff and Shasta and their handlers are uh, up to, how they work. Good afternoon. We talked about the dog's ability to smell and sniff out materials that are used to set fires. That's all, all good and it's all true. But the real, the real important part of their work is their ability to scent discriminate from all the other smells that are in fire scene. Comparing our arson detector dogs to other detection dogs, whether they're narcotics or explosives, these dogs are working in an environment that's extremely hazardous, consisting of completely burned out materials. But in addition to that, all those materials are composed of petroleum-based products that are legally obtained and possessed in our daily lives, whether it's plastic bottles, carpet, draperies. When those materials burn, they give off properties of hydrocarbon-based, petroleum-based products. The same materials that the dogs are trained to sniff out, gasoline, diesel fuel, lighter fluid, so the dog's ability to scent discriminate from those items and those materials that occur naturally in the home or in properties from the liquid materials that are used, that's where the benefit comes in. And when the investigators go into a fire scene, they have a huge area to cover. It all looks the same, it all feels the same to us, and it all smells the same to us. The dog's ability to go into that fire scene and sniff out an exact location where an accelerant was used to start that fire is where the benefit comes in. We could send a team of investigators into a fire scene and they'll spend hours, days, looking at a scene and based on their training and experience coming up with areas where they want to take samples from. They could take dozens and dozens of samples, send those samples to the lab and they'll come up negative because we don't know what's there. It looks like it might be there, but we don't know for sure. The dog goes in, and with the handler as a team, the dog pinpoints the exact location where the accelerant is left. That's where we dig. That's the sample that goes to the lab. And those samples that go to the lab have a higher probability of coming back positive. So we save time, effort, money in the investigation, and more importantly, those samples that go to the lab come back positive. So the teamwork between the handler and the dog is, is what really brings us full circle. Now in addition to sniffing out the fire scene itself, which is a primary focus, these dogs and teams are able to work the perimeter of a crime scene or a suspected crime scene. They can find evidence that has been taken away from that scene. 
by a suspect, dropped along the way, whether it's an article of clothing, whether it's a container that held the liquid that they used to accelerate the fire. But the teams can also work the crowds of people that are around a fire scene. We all know people that are involved in, in these crimes tend to hang around and look at the work that they've done. These, do these dogs and handlers can go out into those, scene into those scenes, into those crowds, and work the crowds as well, and the dog can pick out the person in the crowd that deposited <coughs> the ignitable liquid in the scene to start the fire. Because as we all know, can't, anything that's brought into a crime scene, people bring something in, they bring something out. So when they leave and they've set a fire, a lot of times they have that evidence still on them, whether it's on their hands or on their clothes or on their shoes. So the simple fact of having these teams available to not only investigate the fire after the fact, but to bring them in while it's still ongoing is a huge benefit. And they're quite successful in doing that by picking out people in crowds that are directly involved with setting the fires. Uh, so thank you. Any questions? Great. Uh, next, we'll have the teams do a demonstration. We've got some cans set up. Uh, some of the cans are blank. One of the cans is hot with a training aid in it. The handlers will work their dog over those cans. The dog will stop, sniff, and then give a final alert on the can that possesses the ignitable liquid in it. You guys ready? Basically, uh, this is just a, a can drill, a drill, yeah. drill that we do, um, and, and we'll, we'll put the dogs at ease. She's, she's got to smell huff there for a minute, make sure she has everything. But then what we do is we uh, we dress her across these, and I'm going to do a Come here. She knows what to do. Come here. Do it this way. Ready? Ready? Go to work. See? See? Come on, let's go to work. See? See? Seek. No, let's go to work. <laughs> she asked me to go to work. Seek. Seek. Now, she's not going to drag off of this one. Show me. Seek. So she'll stay right there until I feed her over the source. Once I feed her over the source, then we move on to the next one. See? See? Knock it off. You're not going to get food in every one. <laughs> <laughs> Smart dog. Well, it's, it's a benefit for us, obviously. Well we, we know where she is. <laughs> so then, let's go. And Hop is a state farm dog. They're trained exactly the same. And the primary indication is to sit. He doesn't like to stay there because he's hungry, so he'll want to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then we do a secondary, because we he can hit a general area, and then we want to pinpoint that because we only have gallon cans. So I tell him to show me. Show me better. Ooh. Come. You see? Come. They won't stay on the can. If they they want to sniff it because they're not. But they're based, the dogs, even though they're two different agencies that train them, they, uh, they do the exact same thing. They, they're unbelievable. How long does it take a dog to learn the training of this? The ETF dogs, uh, they take them, they're basically the same thing, they take them to the puppies. Uh, 
This one and my first one that I had that just retired both flunked out of the seeing eye program I, because they like to eat the cheeseburgers off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I'm glad they did because they've been phenomenal arson dogs. I uh, worked Metro for five years and I just got off last year, uh, January, uh, July. Um, they take them when they're 10, 12 weeks old and then they just socialize them. They take them into the public. They just they have different puppy raises, and then when they bring them back into, they train them for like eight to ten weeks, and then they call the handler, and they are trained when I get there, and then they have to work on me for eight to ten weeks. So, and then we train them every single day. It's a big commitment. It's it's not a tool like my shovel or my truck. When I go home tonight at five o'clock, I can throw the keys on the dash, and I'm done until whenever I go back. He has to eat. They're food reward dogs. Same as a state farm, and they have to they have to eat. So we have to train them every single day. And we trained on these cans this morning, and they they know there's something in the cans. If we move them around, he's going to come to that third can and pay more attention to it because it was there before. Right. So you have to constantly second guess them and out and second you know outthink them all the time. And it gets very it's very stressful to keep up with them, but they're so smart they. They know that's just like us. If we go to McDonald's, you know you're going to get a hamburger. They know they go to that third can right now, they're going to get fed again. But if we spin them around, they'll both go right to that third can. So they'll leave it and then go to the next one and find the real one. But that's only one drop of gasoline in there. And there's other scents in these cans. And uh, so that's very, and it's 50% evaporated gasoline. So it's not pure gasoline. The other, the other cans actually has products that are similar to the house, the products you get out of houses in Maine. Everything from sheetrock to pine flooring to hardwood flooring um, to foam, things like that. And then, and then we heat them up to off gas, and we call it, so that it's got an odor to it. And that's what we bring the dog in. That's probably what Mike was talking about with scent discrimination. Is we want to make sure that they, they understand that, that, that smell from whether it be burned foam or whatever. Um, make sure that the dog's not hitting on that and they go to the source of the ignitable liquids. So, for, for me, the, her easiest uh, way of doing it, we have a, an eight space wheel that I have in my basement that all have different ones in it. And every two or three days, heat them up to off gas them. And I'll have one that'll be hot. And then, and I always use 50% evaporated gas. That's what I always use. And she'll, uh, we go downstairs and we do it off lead downstairs. Um, most of the time is off lead for her. But she will, uh, We'll whip that around, she'll come back and she'll, she'll just walk right around until she finds the right one, pop a sit, and that's how she gets fed. And that's every day. If she doesn't work a crime scene or work a scene to get fed, we do that or we do, um, we'll stop at some of the local fire stations. They're really great because of the seams in the uh, cement floors. And we can put drops here and there in the cement floors and we bring them in, we'll work that. Uh, we'll do carpet, uh, clothing, we'll do anything. We do uh, shoes because, as Mike said, uh, some of our work is in crowds. We get to this fire scene early enough and it's still going on and there's a crowd going uh, out there. We can walk these dogs through there with just a quiet seek, just a, just a whisper of seek walking through there and if somebody's got ignited liquid on their clothing on their shoes, they're probably going to indicate. It doesn't mean the person did the fire, but if it's a person that had been evicted from the house four days before that, we want to know that. So it's another, it's another tool for us. Can we do much to ask to do it again? Oh. <laughs> Want to go work? Want to go work? Ready? Work. See? 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 We keep going like that. She's not going to move. I can pull her. She's not moving until I feed her. <laughs> she knows that she's, she's done what she's supposed to. Now it's time to get food. And then we go to the next one. Huh. Mike's going to get at me for not getting close to the floor. But we always do. After, the, after that, we always do one on the floor. Because once in a while we'll have empty cans, none of them will have will be hot, and then we'll put a drop on the floor after. <laughs> so. oh. <laughs> well, they get along good, and, and the dogs. We we do a lot of demos at schools, fire departments, uh, you know, uh, town um, meetings, the uh, town meetings, but uh, you know, fun days and stuff, and we'll do exhibitions there. And they love the kids, and, the, and she knows my. <laughs> Danny, do you want to do a lineup with? Uh, yep, we can. We have three volunteers from the crowd, but our state farm agents. 
to step up and what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a couple of drops of the training aid on my shoe so it doesn't have to go on yours. We just want you as, a, as the controls. So we'll move the cans out. No, I'll just put it on me. This way you don't have to go her to see. This way you don't have to go home smelling like gas. Oh, good. I'll spare you. We train, yeah, I'm one of the trainers for the uh, main specialty dogs, which is affiliated with the state farm. Do the dogs go home with you guys? Do they with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the dogs live with the handlers, Forget go home that. with them, they're on vacation with them. Yeah, the bond is... It's quite extreme. Now, do you just work in Maine or all over? Uh, the, the, the State Farm Program sponsors dogs from all over the United States and Canada. Great idea. So I'll be the bad guy. And I'm just standing in the crowd amongst other people looking looking at the scene. And the handlers will come through with their with their dogs and we'll watch the dogs work. Okay. Okay. Ready? See. See. Oh, good. See. Oh. Show me. Show me back. Now, both of these dogs were around me earlier, and they didn't show any interest in me other than saying hello. Because I didn't have any, anything on you. She says, what about one more? All right, we got it. Yes. They are smart enough to figure that out. Show me that. Show me. Show me down. Show me. It's getting wrong. They will. He's pointing to the person. Just like that. 